morning, everyone, or uh, a pleasant day to everyone. Today, we will be having our uh, performance tasks number two, and uh, it is on uh, Kulum's Law. And the objective or activity you know, is to verify the principle that governs the Kulum's Law for electrostatics. As you will understand, what we are trying to find in Kulum's Law no, uh, is that we are trying to find the, the amount no, or the degree of the force that is present between two charges. And we are looking at two variables that are, uh, that are uh, used or are needed no, in determining this force. No? So uh, we will be looking at that. No? And then to help us in that area, we will be using the FET simulator that uh, we, we will have no, in a short while. And uh, actually, no, we can flash it over here. So this is the Coulomb's law for electrostatics. And there are two options here to use that. No? And the option that we are going to select is this one. No? So we will have uh, the macro scale. No? And uh, if we try to open this up, no, you will see, we will be seeing this one. No? So anyway, uh, we go back to our... Uh, lab experiment so i believe no in our physics one we've been having this format no and i guess you are quite familiar with the diagram so you will be graded for this no and uh, anyway there's a detailed rubrics that is found as well no at the bottom of this template so you will be using this template when you submit back no your work so there are tables there but uh, i guess no there are no computations anymore because Based on the uh, simulator that we will be having, now we will be simply jotting down uh, the values that we will be getting there. But there are, again, uh, these different portions. And just uh, a kind of a review. Now. So when we, when we mention about discussion, so it will refer into the principle. So what's the principle? What's the law that was uh, being, uh, being uh, tackled? Now? So you can... Uh, get some reference, some text, or some uh, sites, websites, no, where you can uh, pick out no, the principle. The observation, of course, is what we see, what we've uh, noticed no, when we change one variable. So maybe no, what's the effect on other variables? No? So we can, we can use that as our observation based on the things that we gathered. And likewise, no, our analysis will be done no? You can do that in several steps. You can do some comparison, some contrasting of uh, variables. And uh, likewise, no, you can also do uh, based on some tables there, no? some patterns that we are seeing. So whether, whether variables are inversely proportional to one another or they are directly proportional to one another. And likewise... Uh, uh, pointing things that stand out is also a way of analyzing. No? Uh, and uh, of course, our conclusion no, is uh, an answer to our objective. So what have we found no, based on some evidences as well, no? based on a table, on a graph? No? So what are things that we can conclude no, based on the principle that we just learned? No? Now, here's the detailed rubrics, which you can read now. And uh, again, uh, we have no, a total points here for around 70 points. No? So you may refer to that one. And then this one is break down into five parts. So the highest will, of course, be letter A. No? So this will be a perfect score. No? Let's say, for example, five points no, for this part. So if you've got them all, no? so you may, you may have their five. Then you may have here for B4, no? 3, 2, 1. F is fail, Siguro. So you can think of it as getting just uh, one point there. No? If this item is, is having no, a total of a perfect of five points. No? Um, so again, no, just like 15, you can have no, a regular uh, decrease of the value 15, no? then 12, then maybe nine, six, and maybe you not know, the lowest score there would be three. No? So something like that. No? So you can simply divide these uh, values above no? in, in this uh, section. No? So you can divide 40 by five. No? So you maybe have, 
you may have there eight no, as the interval for each value. No? So that's how we interpret our rubrics. So you can read the rubrics carefully. No? And uh, what do we do no, in our FET simulator, in our uh, uh, Hulum's law no, or principle? So, of course, you can you can get an image no, or a picture of the diagram that we have there, no? maybe for some of the trials that you'll be going to. And maybe explain as well no, how you uh, perform no, the activity. No? And, of course, we relate that to the uh, simulator that we will be using now our procedure no? so a detailed diagram and procedure now will if you look at the rubrics there's also a corresponding score there now so you may look at the at the rubrics now how you will be graded in this area now and how much is the total score now now for the table so the table will guide us now how to use the the uh, no, no, the simulator no? now for the first set now of uh, data no? so you will be simply changing the values no? of our no? uh, charge so we said no um, for the first set of uh, activity uh, or uh, for the first variable that will be looking at now in the simulator so we will be simply increasing the values of the charges now so there are two sets of charges that we'll be seeing there now and they are labeled in micro columns now so we will be having values here that will be an in, in an increasing manner so from trials one to five now so you'll be increasing q1 and q sub two whereas now your your distance between the charges will be kept constant now so uh there's a value there in uh there's a there's a unit of length there now that is i think no i think centimeter or millimeter you have to simply convert that to meter here now but you will have only one value all throughout so your your distance r which sometimes called is called a radius no but uh basically no to really understand that no that's that's the mean radius or distance so you will have that in meters, no? express the value in meters, no? whatever is in the simulator, you have to convert it here, but you will have only one value. Now next is to jot down no? the corresponding force no? that you will have. No? So, so how much is the force in the simulator? You can simply copy the value. No? And I think you know, the value there is in Newton. No? So you can simply jot it down. No? Now next in the in this one, no? so you will be having now no uh, the the charges this time no q one and q sub two as a constant value no. Now the next that we will be uh, increasing no is the distance between the charges no. So this is the variable now that is being no changed no this column here no the distance. Keep the values of Q sub one and Q sub two, no, steady, but change this, no. So after changing the distance, you may now, no, uh, record, no, the corresponding forces, no, that is a result, no, of the value that you have, no. Now you'll notice that the values of F can be either attraction or repulsion, because there's a way that we can change, no the sign of our charges q sub one and q sub two no? so you'll notice that uh, we can make f no whether they are pointing towards each other or pointing uh, the forces are pointing away from one another no? now here's the picture of our uh, our fet simulator guys no? so there are two options actually no we have the macro scale and I think what's the other one? No? Atomic scale. No? So what we will be choosing now when you open up the link there now, which is shown in your in your lab template no? or in the template that we have no? near your materials and apparatuses. So um, you are to choose no? the macro scale, and this is how it looks like. No? Now the the charges are indicated in this huge no uh, circular thing no like a ball 
and uh, you can measure their distance now using this ruler below that is marked in centimeter now so you can actually move the ruler guys now so you can measure the distance in between there now how how far actually now are your are your charges so maybe that's around four centimeter now so that is now uh, around four centimeter uh, the distance between our charges now the value of the charge inside now can be changed now by by increasing this one now so you can change the value of the charge now so you can simply look at this value to microcoulomb no and i don't think that we could have a middle value there so they are either one no? or zero no something so if you go left you'll have a negative value and usually you know the color of the ball there changes to blue no if it's a negative value and if it's red then it's a positive charge no so we have either no negative or positive charges and then you also notice that the arrow there no, is indicating whether they are attracting or whether they are repelling. No? So if they are both positive, you'll notice that the arrows now are pointing away from one another. No? So again, no, for the first set, you are to change. No? You are to keep the distance the same. So whatever is the distance that you choose no, for your group. And uh, the only thing that you will be doing is to have five different sets of values for Q1, which is charge one, Q sub two or charge two, no, by simply increasing this one. No? So that's that's how you will apply the changing of the values of the charge. No? So either you choose them to be of the same sign or of opposite signs, it's up to the group. No? Now, uh, next thing is to simply no, record or jot down this force. No? And you'll notice that the force are both the same no, for, for these two charges. No? So all that you will do for trial one, supposing this is trial one, you can now record the value of F. No? So for the first set, what we will be changing is simply the value of the charges. No? So that's how, uh, that's how you will use the CMU later now now for our no, uh, next set of data there now we're in what we will be changing is the distance no so you can keep no a set of value for q1 and q sub 2 no uh, in this case our q sub 1 by the way is on the right i uh, don't know this is our q sub 1 the one on the left no so we will keep our Q1 and Q sub 2 steady you know, in value. But what we will be changing is the, of course, the distance. No? So again, as you keep the distance, no? as you change the distance, uh, the suggestion will be you know, to, in, to increase the distance. No? So from a very close distance, no, you can get your uh, ruler. No? So maybe you'll move it somewhere here so that it will be easy to measure. Then you can now get the uh, ruler now so the ruler will now give you something like uh, what's this now so this is around 2.8 now centimeter so i think every graduation there is 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 now so this is around 2.8 centimeter so you record that now if that's the distance that you want now. and again now you can vary it now by increasing the distance from trial one now to trial number five no? so again now that's how we use no this uh this simulator and again i'll just to give you a refresher let's see the the page again no? so for our activity so here it is so for this first set in letter a now what we will be changing is the amount of the charge q1 and q2 but keep r constant no? whereas in letter b no we will keep Q1 and Q2 no? with only one set of the same value all throughout, but R will now be increased. No? So you will change the value of R by moving the charges no? further and further from one another. No? And you have to record the value of R. No? Now again, the, the values of F, there's nothing to calculate, no? but simply uh, you will jot down no? the value of of f now now maybe now you can include a sign no, if you want no so for 
negative forces, we know that that's attraction. For positive forces, that's repulsion. No? So again, now this is our table that you will try to complete, no, basing on the uh, simulator. No? So again, now don't uh, forget, you will be graded now based on these rubrics that we see below. No? So good morning and uh, have a pleasant day on your performance tasks number two.